tell literally make the world if you want to change the world you need to change your story hello and welcome to the et edge cutting chai stories i'm your host deepthi divan and today in this episode of cutting chai stories brought to you by et edge i bring to you yet another inspiring and interesting story today we have with us abhishek gharat co-founder and ceo craft pixel digital solutions private limited Craft Pixel specializes in web development, optimization, maintenance as well as building interesting solutions to today's business needs. At Craft Pixel, Abhishek is building a work culture that is fulfilling, one with play, purpose and potential. He believes in managing things and leading people and not vice versa. Building processes that are simple and sustainable. Abhishek is also co-founder and managing partner Digital Campfire Ventures LLP. Well, Abhishek is passionate about unlocking people's true potential through empathetic listening and strategic challenges and feedback. He believes in bringing an organization's potential online using IT. He's a mentor, a friend, cheerleader and coach wearing many hats but with one mission, making a difference. So welcome Abhishek. Well, thank this uh, opportunity to tell stories. I would love to like you know share stories from my journey uh, today. Absolutely, Abhishek. So we are so delighted to have you join us today, and our viewers are waiting to hear from you. Let us dive straight into the conversation. So, did your parents have any dreams about what profession you should take up? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, so let's go back in time. Um, this was when I was. in the 12th grade and i had just finished my exams and uh, being the student that i was i i did not score a very good marks and uh, my my dad had worked in the railways uh, like uh, he retired in 2020 may 2020 um, uh, he worked in the railways for 40 years and uh, back then when i finished my education uh, i mean the 12th uh, grade he bought home uh, the motorman's form so like you know my my dad had a vision that i should be a motorman and it was quite a funny uh, i was saying uh, because he saw me playing these um, train simulation games uh, in the 10th and the 11th grade and like he thought that you know i have an interest in being a motorman and like you know uh, that's that's how like you know that's that that was one of his uh, like you know things uh, that he wanted me to be a motorman um however i had different interests uh, this was i wanted to get into engineering so yeah that's that yeah all right well a great start at that and um, uh what made you join the business that you are in right now what made you in it was crucial when starting a service business okay so um i was never meant to get into uh, business like you know coming from a maharashtrian family business is quite low down upon uh, in, in because like you know it's like business is for the uh, the other caste like you know say marwadis gujarati etc but in a maharashtrian family the conversation about money does not start uh, very well in the young days like you know it's sometimes like money is evil when not a lot of those things happen in my family uh, but uh, like you know it's always about taking up a job um, and uh, so in 2014 uh, well it was a stroke of luck uh, i remember the day very specifically this was the 26th of july 2014 it was a rainy day uh, it, it was a sunny day in rainy uh, july of uh, 2014 and uh, i remember quite well <laughs> it's a little funny uh, i was doing push ups when the idea of graphics came about and um, prathamish had just so prathamish is my elder brother by 5 years and uh, he had just woken up and like i told him to like hey like you have worked in the freelance space for the last 5 years since graduation and uh, i have this interest in uh, design so like why don't we just start uh, something and we were very naive back then right like as a young person like very naive like sab ho jayega and everything and uh, one good thing that we did back then was uh, we not make any forecasts of such like you know when how will you get these clients or like uh, what are these uh, clients uh, so i think that helped us a lot because usually what happens is your mind puts a break to an idea as soon as like you know when it it starts getting scary you get anxious and then your mind puts a break to it uh that did not happen with us and like you know with a with a full big investment of rupees 1000 uh, we bought two domains which was graphics.com graphics.in and that's how we started 
the story after that is like you know it was all crickets like you know there were no clients uh, like you know for the next uh, two to three months uh, but yeah we did start and like you know it was a good start and uh, as i continue to the story i will share about how uh, our very first project was not uh, did not earn us any money but it earned us a lot of dua in the world uh, but we'll get to that as as the interview progresses Yes, yes. So, uh, please tell us about that. After that, what was the journey like? So, you so, saw a dream. I think the seeds were sown by your brother. You saw this dream, and then you did not think about, uh, you know, the practical aspects, which is probably great initially. Otherwise, there's a lot of you get scared, right? You get scared. Uh, post that, what was your journey like? Our viewers would like to know. So, um, we started the company. Um, like we got it registered, etc., and all that stuff happened. Uh, like on the first day, we got the logo done. And the logo is the same that you see in the background up there. That was uh, made by me back then. And um, like I said, it was all crickets for the next one month. And uh, on one uh, on another rainy day, I was out uh, in Vasai East. So we are from Vasai. Um, and uh, I met uh, Mr. Ashok Pandey there, who I used to look up to as a mentor back then. Uh, and uh, so he was like, hey, Abhishek, there's this one girl. Um, her name is Bhavisha Singh. And she has been selected to represent India and Germany for karate. However, as things go in India, like, you know, cricket gets the most uh, preference, precedence over everything else. And like, you know, there no the, the other sports kind of get ignored. Yeah. And he was like, he, um, see if you can get a website done for like, you know, little money, like, you know, for a little cheap for this girl, because it's, it's, a, it's a cause. Uh, we were like, oh, great. This, this could be our very first client. And uh, we we're very excited. And, but then when we go to visit uh, Bhavisha, um, her financial condition was not that great. And like, you know, we realized that she could not even afford like a 5,000 rupees, uh, like, you know, or a 10,000 rupees for the website. And then me and Pratamesh got back home together and we decided that, okay, let's, like, you know, this is our first project. Let's go out and do some good in the world. Like, you know, let's, let's start with that. And uh, cutting the story, because this is a long story of what happened then is uh, we got the website done. It took us about three weeks to get the website done and get all our certificates scanned. And she was literally a prodigy. She was a, she was a karate prodigy. And, like, you know, we believe that uh, this girl can get, uh, like, you know, uh, what do you say? We should pursue things for this girl. Like, we had no relations with this girl. Like, you know, she was not a friend. She was not a family friend, nothing. She was just a stranger in the world for us. And uh, we decided, to, like, we let's get it done. We got the website done. Uh, then she drops a bombshell on us saying, like, uh, like although my goal to raise is 2 lakh rupees, uh, my teammates are also not able to raise money. So it's like a Tata committee event where like, you know, three people have to go. Like, you know, just one cannot go. And then we were like, hey, we go back to the group. So there was this one group who we had formed who had said like, you know, we'll write letters to our CEOs, CFOs and we'll help like, you know, Bhavisha raise money. Now we go to them and say, hey, like, hey guys, uh, the goal is uh, no longer two lakh rupees. It's uh, six lakh rupees. And then everyone's faces uh, told the story. Like, you know, Abhishek, and like one guy came forward and said, hey, Abhishek, we have not even raised 5,000 rupees till now. How are we dreaming of six, six lakh rupees? Mm -hmm. And then just the way me and Pratibisha started, we are all alone again. And uh, at that time, I knew the co-founders of a popular uh, social media channel. Uh, they wrote the India Against Corruption movement uh, at that time. And like, you know, they had a million followers. And uh, we reached out to them. Like, you know, I reached out to their co-founders now. And as it goes with all celebrity relations, you know them, but they don't know you. So you message them and like, you know, there's no reply because like, you know, they have very busy schedules and lifestyles. But then I messaged their page on Facebook and uh, they were pretty quick to reply. They said that, uh, hey, Abhishek, like, you know, understand that cricket is always given importance and like, you know, you all have already made the website. We would love to be a partner on this uh, journey. And like, you know, uh, then they were like, hey, Abhishek, but we don't have a team to take a video interview because see, if you're raising money for this girl, she has to be on video. Like, you know, a face has to tell the story. You cannot just tell a story and be able to raise, like, say, six lakh rupees. At that time, the attendance in my college was about 72%. And uh, now they were like, hey, like Abhishek, you need to go and take her interview. There's no other option we have. And then we worked on the script till about three, three or four o'clock in the morning. I go to a place at around seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, she's also bunk classes that day. I have bunk college that day. Uh, and I did not care at that time, like hey, set, because when the attendance goes below 70%, your parents are bought to the college. And uh, it was a big dilemma for me at that time. Like, yeah, but then in such situations of life, you realize that uh, it's the last mile. 
and if you could just pursue that life's last mile for someone else something can happen for them something and it could be a life changing trajectory uh, like you know it can make a big life changing uh, moment in their trajectory so i went to a place we um, and at that time i was pretty jittery in front of the camera although i was leading a photography team uh, in my college i used to be behind the camera i was not very good in front of the camera so i used to jitter a lot and like you know for a 5 minute video i'll like spend 6 hours at a place got the video recorded send it to uh, the social uh, the the social media uh, page and uh, they took about 6 hours to edit it i remember clearly this was a friday they post the video with chakde india music and uh, the next morning i get a call from bhavesha's mom because we had given her mom's account details we not want to get in the middle of the money uh, so her mom's account details were there on the website and uh, she gives me a call on that saturday morning um, she says abhishek someone deposited 50000 in the account i was like this is a scam this is not possible it's uh, <laughs> so i quickly log on to the email address that we had created for her and there was this one couple from the uk who had wired 50000 rupees overnight and then we were like ki now this is going to get uh, this is going to work out pretty well they went overboard um, they raised 6 lakh 87000 rupees wow. uh, the website is still live uh, it's karategold.in and it's live not because like you know we achieved this feat it is live because it's a constant reminder to us like this is where we had started this is our first dot in the journey and as we look back like you know like steve jobs had said right uh, you can only connect the dots looking backwards you cannot connect the dots looking forward so like you know that was that if if someone asked me that is the most important dot in our like you know we went out to do good uh, we not earn any money out of it uh, but we i think we earned a lot of dua because then those dots that came after that uh, like you know uh, make me tell the story wherein we then uh, met our co-founders those co-founders took us into board rooms of like you know large companies like say cover fox acquisition insurance angel one etc and then that's how we started working with all of these things. But then that dot uh, is the most crucial, like where we started doing social good. Like we do a social good project every 1.5 to 2 years, just to stay in touch with uh, the ground. Uh, like, you know, um, so that's where our roots are. Well, what a great story and what a great beginning. And uh, okay. you've shown your perfect example of how one can use IT and technology for, uh, you know, creating an impact and difference in people's Perfect. lives. So Perfect. that's, a, I think, a perfect example, something that I'm sure everybody is inspired by. Uh, so you spoke about your co-founders. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, what sure. was the process like? And uh, also, what are the things that you should look for and how should one go about selecting a co-founder? I'm sure this will be very... So I'll share what I know, right? Uh, and this is through experience. Um, my co-founder, like, you know, is Pratanesh, uh, who is my elder brother by five years. And like, you know, I have seen him... Like, you know, since the very childhood and he was my inspiration to get into uh, computers, like my interest in computers came through Prathamesh because, and for Prathamesh, it came through our dad because when he was small, uh, when we were in the seventh grade, our dad used to get these uh, technology magazines at home, which like, you know, there was a magazine called Thing Digit, there was a magazine called Chip, uh, like, you know, they used to get those home, uh, my dad used to get them, and there was, a, there was always a CD at the back of those magazine issues and like, you know, used to play with software back then. Like, you know, we have these, these curious minds. Uh, now, coming to the question of how do you select a co-founder? Well, I knew my brother, like, you know, I've said, seen him for like 15 years and like, you know, and the, I'll tell you what, a mistake that uh, I've seen co-founder friends, other co-founder friends make. Well, whenever they want to start a company, they always get into the finance bits first. Mm. It's, the, it's the alignment on human values that should happen first. Like, because if you don't do that, when the times get tough and which, like, you know, my experience tells it will, uh, Things are going to start breaking and things are going to start falling apart. Things that you thought that this was a core foundation. Hey, I believe that you also believe in the same values. But then it turns out like, you know, it's not happening. And like, you know, so alignment on values. Now, one question to like, you know, someone who's listening to this conversation would ask is how do you come to know a person's values? Well, you do, you watch them from the trenches. Like, well, you go to, a, let's say, an NGO event together. See how that person is with other fellow human beings. Because... And I'm saying that from my experience, you might go, you might like, you know, take up other strategies to find yourself. But in my uh, way of doing it is like to see how this person treats other humans. Like, you know, that was my, uh, and I knew Pratanesh since a long time. So alignment, uh, one uh, mistake uh, uh, to avoid is don't align on the finances and everything bits first. Align on the human values first. 
because there will be a lot of rules unspoken like when you start you go into business and then are tough times and then your values get challenged etc all that thing happens but then if you align on the values first like you know if you align on the principle first everything else is going to fall into place as you as you progress in the journey so that's uh, and this is the most important is your skills as co-founders should not overlap each other hmm. they should complement each other so they should go hand in hand because if it overlaps there's going to be be a lot of decision fatigue like you know you're going to keep fighting over the same thing like you know both of you are good at the same thing like we're finding about it and it's not going to move the company forward right the cause is always bigger than like you both like you or you three or how many of our co-founders here so uh aligning on that like you know and having skill sets that complement each other not overlap like you know is the way to go but as i say that also know that each co-founder should know 20 percent of the expertise of the other co-founder. Let's say like Prathamit is the one who leads technology at our company. And I'm the one who like, you know, uh, looks after all the other departments like sales operations, HR, uh, whatever, like all the six, seven other departments. But I know 20% of what Prathamit does and Prathamit knows 20% of what I do. And that's pretty important because sometimes there are going to be emergencies and you're not going to be able to be there for certain meetings or there's some crucial event that is when like that 20% of knowledge certainly helps uh, like you know so it does well thank you so much for sharing that great tips and great pointers they make absolute sense uh, moving on quickly uh, tell us about your uh, you know the projects that you do for social good you have done so many and you continue to do them what exactly drives you well uh, like i said earlier right um, okay let me let me tell you like you know how maybe this came along in our personalities or like, you know, Prathamesh and my personalities. When we were young kids, uh, mom used to tell us this one story very repeatedly. Uh, she said that when we were kids, like, you know, this is mom telling me this. When we were kids and there used to be even like that one rupee or like a 50 paise Athanaka chocolate that used to come at home. Her mom used to, like, you know, there were four siblings and even that tiny chocolate she used to split into four and then, like, you know, each sibling got an equal part. And then she told the story so repeatedly, like, you know, sharing is very important. And I believe like that, that story in the, in my childhood culminated into this value. I keep saying this thing, right? Like, you know, you need to be rich first, like, you know, they want to be rich first and then they want to contribute back to society. Mm-hmm. So we were like, you know, it makes uh, no difference if we start now, even if we don't have a lot of money, uh, you can still do like, you know, whatever social good with whatever you are. You cannot, as not practice doing this from the beginning is what I want to share. Uh, mm-hmm. And then expect like, uh, like, you know, when you get rich, you're going to keep doing it because your priorities are what you practice when you don't have a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we decided to practice this and like, you know, we keep doing these projects. Uh, but all that aside, like, you know, the main thing is that we want to stay in touch with our roots. Uh, our first roots were, were in social work and like, you know, this is why we keep doing uh, these projects. Um, and these projects, the scale of these projects has only increased with time. Um, in 2017, we worked with the State Election Commission of Maharashtra, uh, where we uh, rebuilt uh, their voter search engine. Back then, there were a lot of issues with the existing website uh, that they had. And unfortunately, it used to crash on the day when it is needed the most. Uh, so, like, you know, they were quite uh, frustrated and like they were like the, the Mumbai elections, the BMC elections of 2017, February 2017. And we had pointed out, like, hey, if the voter search engine is not going to work, a lot of people are not going to be able to find out where their polling booth is hmm. and then a, a pretty large company was managing that website at that time and when we pitched that hey we will build this website in three weeks and give it to you uh and approximately and it's a large website right like there's 7.2 crore there were 7.2 crore voters uh back then uh and like you know that's such a huge number uh to handle because uh like when the show happens like well there are um, 5,000, 6,000 people on the website at the same time. And like, you know, to be able to handle that much amount of load, even the election commission knew to like, you know, it's not a simple task. So all we got is a smirk from the the stakeholders at the election commission that thank you, like, hey, that company, that big company is not able to do it. How are you going to do this? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then thankfully, like, you know, Prathamish's expertise comes into play. He, he's someone who's been very agnostic with technology. Uh, so he builds this. And uh, one day before, uh, one or two days before the this thing is to go live, um, uh, like the 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 commissioner there sees it and he says, "Okay, okay this is good enough." Um, but however, 
people they were not allowed to so for example facebook uh, was a partner uh, back, back then and uh, they were not allowed to send people straight to um, the website i mean and straight to a third party website that is built right uh, so they had to send it send visitors to um, the election commission website first and then from there if people chose to come to the website which we had built then they could however in the on the morning of uh, that day the website crashes the the official website and then there was a decision that was taken that everyone be sent to this website. Mm -hmm. So we were told that, you know, you are not going to have a lot of load on your website because our website is going to be there first and then people are going to come to your website if something happens. Now, the morning of 17th February 2017 was, uh, we had 9,000 people on the website, on our website at that time. It was a state of panic because we were told, like, you know, there's going to be a very less number. But then we handled it, um, like, you know, we were able to handle it. Um, there was a big campaign. So this campaign was officially called the Mahavota campaign in 2017. And there were a lot of partners. Um, and this is not to take credit or anything because, like, you know, there's so many partners involved. That was the year when there was about a 12% jump in voter turnout. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't take credit for this. There was there were so many things that the policy judicial body, the election commission of Maharashtra did at that time. And this is all their credit, uh, like you know, for allowing small players like us, like you know, believing in small players like us to be able to build uh, such a tool. That followed with uh, testimonials from them, uh, with the Emblem of India saying, to, like, you know, we help in the cause, etc. And then, like you know, fast forward 2021, they invite us again to be a technology partner to them. So that's that's how, and like you no. Know, I mean, we live for those moments where, like, you know, we get trust. We don't get the, we don't get any money out of it. But it's just like, you know, helping causes uh, is, mm. you know, it's, is what drives us. Yeah. Well, great. And kudos to that. Uh, well, in the interest of time, I'll quickly move on to our next question. Uh, just uh, quickly tell us the current market can feel like a crisis for some young graduates. So any recommendations okay. you have for them? Um, yeah, a couple of looks. So uh, one funny story that I have missed to tell you is um, in our company, Prathamesh uh, wears the hat of a CTO. He's the chief, chief technology officer. Uh, and I wear the hat of a CEO. Um, but the flip story here is Prathamesh is a commerce graduate. And like uh, with and it is only with time we realize that uh, like you know Prathamesh's skills out uh, outdo a lot of the engineers in IT, even mine, like you know, because I don't code at my company. Uh, I wear like you know the hat of a CEO, I do the sales, marketing, meeting people, etc. But then Pratamish is the one with a commerce degree who is able to excel, like, you know, in his job. So what I've seen is uh, the youngsters of today are very smart. Like, you know, it's no longer a linear career trajectory. So these these folks, they learn from YouTube. They learn from free courses on the internet. And like, you know, they do community learning on platforms like Discord. And like, that's great because, uh, like, you know, Pratamish's story proves that you don't need a degree to excel in something. You can have a certain passion for, uh, like, you know, whatever area. And you can still do good in it. So that is one. Uh, but I understand there's a crisis. Like, you know, a lot of people are unemployed today. I would just like to signal to them a certain shift that is happening in hiring. And like, you know, this might be an insight. Uh, companies are moving to skill-based hiring instead of a resume-based hiring. Till a long time in India, like, you know, most companies were doing resume-based hiring. Wherein, like, you know, the HR executive used to look at the resume, used to find, like, oh, this is presented really well. And, like, used to take that person forward. But then companies are changing that uh, to a skill-based hiring. Where, like, there are these automated platforms now which check your skills first. They are the ones which do your screening. So, I would suggest, like, you know, working on the skills. Like, you know, optimize your resume with AI and write your cover letters with AI. All that's good. Like, you know, but... It's your skills that are going to speak now. So, like, you know, continue doing your, like, you know, YouTube learning, etc. You know, keep excelling, keep practicing projects. It's not just watching these videos on YouTube, it's also practicing them simultaneously. And keep going at the community learning uh, part of the entire journey, which is like on platform like Discord, etc. Yes. Yeah. Those are the tips I would give you. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, thank you so much for answering our questions. We would like to you know, quickly dive a little bit into what you are in the personal space like. So quickly tell us about any hobbies or interests you have or, uh, you know, work-life balance. I did read in your profile that you talked about uh, every now and then I travel within through spiritual excursions. So anything you'd like to talk about that? So that's happened uh when the times got tough in my life actually like you know see, there are three pillars to health right like there's physical health there's mental health and then there is one more which is spiritual health mm -hmm. uh the spiritual part is usually very ignored but then when the times get tough 
it is this component of like you know practice your daily or like you know weekly uh that really helps you in these tough moments because it gives you a space where you realize what are, what is the bigger thing like you know what is the bigger cause you're working on mm-hmm. uh like you know and then it makes all the problems feel, feel very tiny like you know in comparison to the big mission that you are in life so uh I have got into this excursion of spirituality uh, just about like in, in these last two to three years. I'm still trying to build a discipline. Like, you know, it is uh, not very easy. Uh, like, you know, because it start, it gets you to question a lot of things in life. And when that happens, it's a little painful. Like, you know, you start realizing that, like, you know, uh, your values are getting realigned in a better way, etc. And a lot of things happen. Uh, in terms of my hobbies, well, uh, I come from a farmer's lineage. So I recently got a knack into home gardening, like, you know, trying to grow some herbs around the house. I mean, uh, obviously all the, uh, like, you know, the legal herbs, <laughs> there is no version of anything. <laughs> so we've been trying to, I've been trying to grow specifically mint, etc. You know, it's like, uh, like, you know, I have this interest in dancing. So like I've, I've been learning jive, salsa and bachata. So that's, that's wow. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for letting us an insight into your personal life also. And uh, quickly, so you're a Mumbai boy. I'm going to ask you this. What is your favorite? Uh, Vada Pao or Misal Pao? I would go with Misal Pao. Pao. Okay. Yes. And uh, Mumbai in rains or without rains? Oh, definitely in rains. In definitely. rains. Yes. And uh, quickly, could you please describe yourself in three words? Okay. Wow. <laughs> well, I would say one, um, curious. Second uh, would be persistent, hmm. and uh, third would be systems thinker. Hmm. Yeah, just that. amazing, great. Well, thank you so much, Abhishek, for sharing with us about your journey and your life. I'm sure it will inspire all our viewers and resonate with them.